I'm here at the piggy farm trying to turn my money into bacon, but unfortunately the butcher is backed up and see, look at these guys. They just want to become my bacon today. It's like, hey piggy, let's become bacon. Oh, you're such a cute piggy. Not today, piggy, not today. Maybe next week they'll have some bacon for me. These guys are the friendliest pigs ever. Almost feel bad eating them. Carnitas Street Taco. Tastes like carnitas. Who knew? All right. Thanks for uh, tuning in, everybody. Make sure that you subscribe and like this video when we're all done, because today we have some really cool things to talk about. Um, what we're going to talk about on this 2005 STI is a question I get all the time online, and that is, should my car be tuned on speed density or on the math tune? So these Subarus are naturally mass airflow metered, which is one of these. This is a Denso MAF. This is the factory OEM MAF for these cars. And what this does is, is the air blows by it. This little element and these little guys inside here measure how much airflow is going into the engine. It uses that airflow measurement to make pretty much every single calculation that the engine makes about fueling and ignition timing. So this is a pretty important little sensor. Uh, when these fail or start to go bad, you can run into major issues, including total engine failure. The other option, because we have some pretty fancy tuning capabilities now using Cobb access ports or even on the, the open source tools, um, we can often do speed density tuning, um, is to switch to, well, I just said it, speed density tuning. Speed density uses the manifold pressure sensor and an air temperature sensor to use an equation and it's basically just ideal gas law to determine how much airflow is coming into the motor. And then once you know how much airflow, you can inject the correct amount of fuel and give it the correct ignition timing. So you're using two sensors instead of one to calculate your airflow. And that's the important thing. We're calculating airflow here, whereas here we're measuring airflow. So measured or calculated. And there's some important differences that we'll go over in this video. So the first thing we're going to do, because we are going to be using speed density on this car, is we're going to go ahead and get these parts installed. Um, this is a direct plug-in. This I have to wire in, and I'll show you. It's pretty simple how we do that. All right, so that was a simple enough task. We just installed the MAP sensor, which is two bolts, and plug it in. And then the intake air temperature sensor in this ETS front mount, they already had the port tapped for it. So I just threaded that in and then made a wire lead. Now you can buy a plug-and-play wire lead for these. Um, I didn't have any in stock, so I just made one real quick. Um, just tap into two wires in the MAF plug, which are the actual air temp sensor, because this has an air temp sensor and the mass airflow meter in it normally. So right now, the mass airflow meter is actually still plugged in and working. Um, and I just intercepted the, uh, it's the, it's the, on this particular year, it's the side two. So the green with red stripe and the brown one are your air temperature sensor wires. So I just intercepted those two guys. Uh, well, cut because you don't want to leave them plugged in. So cut those two and then ran it to the sensor over here. And now we're installed. It only takes about 15, 20 minutes to do the wiring. Yeah, so it's all wired in and now we're going to start tuning. The car was previously tuned on an open source tune. So uh, we're switching it over. I've just built a base map that's still running off the mass airflow meter. And I have everything scaled in on the access port. Um, as far as the mapping goes. So this is going to install and then once this is installed we'll get going. Real quick, couple of the things that we had to scale in. Um, you can see highlighted things are things that we've changed. So new map sensor. Cobb 4 bar is kind of cool because it's a it's a 0.5 to 4.5 volt sensor meaning each bar of boost is one volt. So one volt equals one bar and then our offset is a half a bar to the negative side, and voila, scaled in, super simple. Um, and then we have the intake temp sensor scaled in, as you can see, um, just making sure that, oh, and then uh, another nice thing is on the Cobb four bar, is you can use a map sensor DTC still. So you have a high input, anything above four and a half, it should throw a code, and anything below a half a volt should throw a code. 
Um, we have the map sensor scaling stock, sorry, the MAF sensor scaling stock, because we have a stock size intake. So we'll start with that. And then otherwise, currently, the speed density mode is gonna be set to MAF. We're gonna start this car on the MAF. But once we start tuning, we'll populate a volumetric efficiency table. Now this is currently unpopulated, and I'll show you what we're gonna to do to populate that. All right, so first thing we're going to do is connect to the computer with the engine off and just double check and make sure that everything is looking good. I don't know why it's taking forever to connect. But we just want to double check and make sure that when we look at the gauges and everything, stuff that's stuff is reading correctly. So um, manifold pressure, uh, intake temperature, this all looks good. It's about 90. According to the dyno, it's 91 in here, so that's pretty close. But manifold pressure looks right. Everything looks okay, so we're going to go ahead and start this, and it should fire right up. And like I said, we're still running on the mass airflow meter. All right, first fire is good. That's always nice when they just turn right on. A uh, couple of roughness counts, but that's not uncommon. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to add a specific monitor to the list. Got a little warm-up flutter there all to fix. Um, so we're going to add this one here that is called, where is it? It's SDVE Estimated Math. So what this is, is this is going to kind of tell me pretty close what my estimated volumetric efficiency is. So you can see our air fuel correction is pretty close. So I can go into my VE table itself and we will trace, oh, there it is. So we'll trace, and then I know that my VE at this moment, let's make this a little bit shorter. I got too many things logged here, but my VE right here is about 65. So we can start to build a rough VE table pretty quick. And I'll tell you, this is right where I expected it to be. All right, so basically, now this is super rough because like I said, we're just roughing in a VE table. And then what we'll do is we'll do some logging of a few runs at low boost on the MAF to get ourselves an actual VE table. And this is literally just me populating a map how I typically see Subarus come in. And this will probably be on the rich side for this map here, which would be fine, but we're not actually even gonna run this map. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna see what this looks like. Um, like I said, we're actually running on the map, and look, it's, once, it's trying to add a bunch of fuel. I don't know why it's trying to add a bunch of fuel now. That's interesting. What happens if we just switch it over to math? This car, so one thing I did want to talk about, this was supposed to be for a different video, is you don't ever know why an engine fails until you get it back on the dyno. So I just actually switched it. It's now running on speed density. Um, it still wants a lot of fuel. poles and see what it does. So I think there might be something wrong at idle with the map itself because cruising now I have no corrections and I switched it back to math mode so when it comes to an idle it, either the math isn't reading correctly or it could be the front O2 sensor causing a weird feedback uh, but it does seem to be reading correctly now that I've got a little bit of the So we're going to go ahead and do Wastegate default short pole, probably the 3500 RPMs, maybe 4000 if everything looks good. And we're going to compare some data. So 
So here was my pole. You can see my air fuel came down to about an 11.6, 11 or so, which is pretty darn close to my target. My target was about 11.40. So we'll add just a hair fuel um, there, but I'm actually not going to because I want to start doing my VE table. Um, we came up to about 14 and a half pounds by 3,800 RPMs. Horsepower torque, they're low, but we didn't do a full pull, and this is like the very, very beginning. But what we want to do is we want to look at this good old graph here, and oh, huh, um, I want to remember I said I thought maybe there was something going on with the front O2 sensor. You can see during the pull, the front O2 sensor pegged full lean. So the front O2 sensor is definitely not working correctly. So we'll have to go get another one of those. Uh, but my command fuel, don't mind that spike. We were at 11.32 for command fuel. Um, no not corrections of any kind. Timing looks fine for what we're doing here. All right, but the important thing that we wanted to see was this particular one called SD, SD, VE estimated math. So we can see through the pole, we start out at 84, at 2100, and we go up to 95 by 3800. So we'll come into our, our SD, VE, and 2800, we're at 85, so we're actually a little bit less. And I think I'm just gonna do that. Uh, did I say it was 95? I like to do it this way. This is, you're, just, you're just watching my process here. All right, my guess is, is that we wanted, remember we we're at about 11.6 instead of 11.3. So if we do 0.6 divided by 11.3, we end up, we want another 2.6% pretty much everywhere. So this should be pretty close to 100 when we're all done. Um, that's already fairly close. So, my guess is that we're probably going to need to add about 3%. But let's go ahead and let's switch it over to speed density here. And let's do another poll. This time we're in speed density mode. Alright, so the, the, the O2 sensor is being weird. It just ran up. I tried to grab the camera. Anyway, we're going to do a poll. Um, here we go. Burble. <laughs> we got some burble tune going here. Well, we got a file open error on the dyno. And see, the sensor's working okay now, and then it starts being weird. So, as you can see, we'll have to replace this front O2 sensor, but we can still tune this car without it. Um, it's just going to be kind of a pain in the butt. So, we're going to come in here and look. We're still a little bit lean. I had to add quite a bit of fuel. Um, we're looking pretty good down low, but as we come up in the RPMs, it's just breathing pretty good so we're gonna have to give it a little bit more fuel we'll close the previous run and we'll add this fuel in the VE table so uh, 5,000 or so and this isn't really what this video was about um, this video is supposed to be about the differences between SD and MAF tuning so I'm gonna stop with the showing you guys what I'm doing as far as tuning the car goes and I'm gonna go on and show you the I'm going to get this car tuned and then I'll show you the differences. All right, so like I said, we're running in speed density mode, not in MAF or hybrid. And to do that, we've populated our volumetrically, volumetric efficiency table instead of using the normal MAF calibration. And the reason is 348 grams per second would run out pretty early in the tune. Um, you can see here we have our MAF voltage and it is saying that it peaked at 4.94, which is kind of interesting that it couldn't even peg at five. Um, but it did that clear back at like 5,500 RPMs or so, 56. Um, I don't think this math was reading correctly when I was doing a little bit of a, a little bit of tuning on the math. It was it was doing some weird readings. Um, just wasn't reading very well. But here's this estimated VE. And we ended up pretty close to it. 
um, but we were a little bit higher on the estimated VE. I was at about 103 was my finals in the math calculation was thinking it was about 93. So um, the math definitely wasn't quite reading right. And that's one of the big issues with a mass airflow meter is that you only have one sensor. And if that sensor stops reading correctly, um, you end up with, uh, with basically a bunch of false, false readings. And because you're measuring as opposed to calculating, yes, it can, it's better at adaption. If airflow goes up, it's going to see that and it's going to give it more fuel. Um, you know, as, as your airflow starts to rise. So we have today 433.28 horse and 426 foot pounds of torque, nice flat power curve. Um, the boost does peak about 24 and a half pounds, but it, out towards red line, um, it's a little lower um, down there. Oh, it's not, for some reason the thing's not working. There we go, 22.7 pounds out at red line. Um, I could have tried to bring a little bit more boost in, but with the, how hot it was in the dyno room um, right now, Having sat for a while, it's still over 95 or 94 degrees. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty good numbers for a setup like this on, and this is 92 octane pump gas, it's not 93. I wish we had 93. Um, then we could probably pick up another 15 to 20 horse, but we don't. So that's what the car has going on. Here we have another car. I'm doing a speed density conversion on the dyno with. Um, customer came in for a tune and he has a tile blow off valve which as I've said before this is a really good valve but on a mass airflow metered car it hangs open way too long and causes issues and the other issue is this beautiful IAG catch can again a beautiful piece they work great except when you have the big one inch slobber tube um, that's a giant air leak and when you have a big air leak like that you have to run speed density so we're just going to do a real quick this car is only it's a, it's a blouse one five but it's a stock motor so we're not going to push a lot of boost so we're going to leave the stock map sensor but i'm installing this air intake temp sensor and one of the advantages to having the air temp sensor here even if you're still planning on tuning with the math is now i have an actual charge air temp not just an intake air temp, because normally the intake I've got sitting up here, but normally it's right here. This is just gonna give you engine bay temperature coming into the motor, but the intercooler, especially a front mount, is gonna do a lot of work to that air and cool it off quite a bit. And so when you're trying to do compensations for ignition timing or boost control or anything like that, um, having the air intake temp right next to the throttle body gives you a lot better, more accurate measurement of the airflow temperature itself so if you want to pull a little bit of ignition timing for a high intake air temp and whatnot, you can. Um, what happens when you're using the mass airflow meter here is you see like 140 degree engine bay temp, 150 degree engine bay temp, and you pull a bunch of ignition timing because you think you've got a bunch of hot air coming in, but you have a front mount and it's a fairly cool day, and your actual intake temp is 91 degrees, which is pretty darn good and you lose a whole bunch of power because you pulled all this timing out because you thought your air was hot, but your intercooler did a good job and got the air back to where it needs to be. So that's why it's really nice, even on a mass airflow metered car, to have your air temp be at the throttle body 